Hey, welcome to Think Creative TV. I'm Matt Pullen, and this is our place to share all about how to use your iPad creatively in your classrooms. If you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll be kept up to date on everything that we release. Now let's get stuck into today's video. So in this video, I wanted to show you a really awesome tool which sits on multiple devices. It's a, it's a web-based tool. Um, it works so cool on an iPad though to give you so much extra functionality at just pushing a button, okay? And the app, or it's not an app as such, it's a, it's a web thing, is called Classroom Screen. And it's there at the top, classroomscreen.com. It's recently had an update and it's got some additional settings in it. Um, so I'm just going to go to launch that and you'll see straight away, basically it's going to give me this um, interactive whiteboard kind of feel on my iPad. So loads and loads of functions that you can use in this. We're just going to go through the basic functions along the bottom and talk about how you might use that in your classroom. Um, I've got Proud Patrick on the screen at the moment. I think he looks great, nice and chilled, nice and relaxed. If I want to change the background though, if I tap on that first tab here, the backgrounds, there are lots and lots of different backgrounds that you can choose from depending on how you feel. Um, it could be that you want it to be specific because the topic you're doing, which might match your mood of the day or the students' moods of the day or whatever it might be, but you know you can easily just change your backgrounds onto your screen because this is going to be potentially up in your classroom when um, you know you're teaching in the classroom. But also if you were delivering a lesson and doing a screen recording like this, you've got that in your background for lots of things that you might be doing if you were video recording a, a, a lesson. This one's really cool, this random name generator. So we can just paste in the names of people in here. So I'll just very quickly just type in a couple. I always find I use the same names all the time for this, not sure why. Anyway, when I tap on choose... I'm not sure I understand. Thanks, Siri. When I tap on choose, it's just going to randomly select a name. So a really, really useful tool. It takes seconds to just add those in. If you've got a class list, you can just copy and paste them in. Um, and that's just going to be on your device. Now you can, you know, play around with this as well. And this is the great thing. You can just choose so much within the random name generator to just kind of make it bespoke to your needs. Um, really, really useful tool. When you're done, you just simply tap on the X and that's going to disappear away. Similar sort of thing with dice, just want to roll a dice, roll two dice, roll three dice. It's just going to randomly select things. Again, lots of teachers use this kind of approach to group students together. Um, it, it could be that you've got an activity in the class where you just need a set of dice to roll things. There we go. You've got them built in. You don't have to find the dice. It's just always going to be there. This one's quite fun. Um, this one is going to allow my microphone to check up here how loud I'm talking, whether it's too loud in the classroom. Um, you can change the sensitivity. Again, lots of teachers I know kind of use this approach. We're gonna we're gonna work a, a quiet voice at the moment, or just you know the rules are off. Go for it. Talk as loud as you want. Um, but again, you can have this. You can also have an alarm that will sound if it goes over a certain level that you set. So that's again really useful. Again, over here, you know, customize what you want it to look like: red background, black background, pink background, whatever it is that you want to have within your sound level. Again, just tap on the X, drop that away. QR codes. This one's a really really good one. Now, if you're using Apple Classroom because your students are all set up on um, Apple devices. Um, you probably don't need to use this, but if you do want to just get students to quickly scan to follow a QR code, I can just type in here uh, and you'll see that as I was changing that, the QR code changes. If you now scan that, it's going to take you to the BBC website. So very, very quick and easy way to just get students to scan the screen and off you go. You're into uh, the app, uh, the website, sorry, that I wanted to put you in. Really good one. Drawing board, so to use it for as a as a you know, whiteboard that you might want to use in your classroom. So you've got some pens, tools down the side here. Um, we can make this you know a little bit bigger if you really need to make it bigger, make it smaller. However you want to use it, you just use it as a whiteboard on your screen. And again, as always, you've kind of got some additional touches in here, which are quite nice. So if you've got specific um, backgrounds that you might want to use to just help you with laying things out. Um, and again, such a cool tool to just have just at your fingertips when you're um, either in the classroom or if you're doing a, a, an online presentation for a lesson. Text, similar sort of thing. You know, I've just got a text box so I can type into this. I won't go into too much detail on that. You, it's, it's, a, it's a text editor, right? Uh, this one, so this one's quite nice. Um, similar to the, the sound level one, 
just an icon up on the screen. Okay, at the moment we are working in silence. Um, you can change these then to say if you want it to be a whisper or ask a neighbor. So it's just prompts for students to have up on your screen whilst they're doing some work. Really, really you know, simple tool, but sometimes the simple tools are the best. Similar to that, the traffic light system. Now, I used to use this when I was um, teaching uh, in a secondary school and we it was kind of the, the first time that mobile technology was starting to come in and creeping into the classroom. and You'd have people sort of arguing that it, there was a benefit to it and people saying, no, they should all be banned. I actually used traffic lights at a poster um, in my classroom where I used to say, you know, red, no no mobile phones. When today is not the need for mobile phones. Orange was have it handy because it might be something that we're going to use, but but I want them out of the way until we say they're going to be useful. And then green was go for it. Like This is a, a lesson where I want you to use the technology. I want you to be able to research. I want you to be able to document things, be creative. And what was nice here was I'm, I'm not saying we're always using them, but I'm also not saying that we're never using them. But I, as the teacher, still had that kind of control over when we do and when we don't. So it kind of gives that ownership to the teacher still um, of things. Now, you can use traffic lights for all sorts of things, okay? So it could be, you know, we're working or we're not working. I want everyone to stop. But again, great tool to just have in your armory as a teacher. Similarly, a timer. You know, lots of schools use timers. You know, you've got 10 minutes off you go, go and work on something. Start the timer. Timer's going to count down so the students know how long they've got left on things. And again, you can, you know, choose music that you want to play, etc. So many cool options in there. Similarly, stopwatch, just at your fingertips, you've got a stopwatch. I mean, if you're on an iPad, you have the built-in stopwatch and a built-in timer anyway, but for some teachers, it might this might be an easier place for them to access those things. Just good to know that they're there. Generally, a clock, um, you know, and again, if you're teaching children about time, having the digital and the analog um, on your screen anytime, really, really useful. And then a calendar. So again, just, you know, this is what we're doing today. This is what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Again, the, the options are there, how you use them is completely up to you and there are so many creative teachers out there to think about how they might use them. I'm sure you'll think of lots and lots of ways that you can use these tools. And then finally, something which I find really, really useful. Um, down here, you can have multiple screens, you can you know change your backgrounds. This one here is really useful because all of this at the moment I've shown you is in English. Um, I work in Wales, we have Welsh as a second language that we really want to uh, promote in schools. We also have Welsh medium schools and you'll see down the bottom that I can turn this on to be in Welsh. So everything on my screen now is in Welsh. Okay, so for those uh, lessons where we're teaching about a foreign language or if we are teaching in that language because that's our first language, we then have all of that information in that language at the very start. So really, really useful tool to have there as well. Okay, and a couple of last things to just sort of highlight because this is such a useful tool. One, if I go over here, you can log in and sign up to this. It will enable you to have multiple screens, etc. Um, I'm not going to go into all of that detail at the moment. This is quite a nice touch. You can have polls within this. So just a very, very quick exit poll. What did you think of today's lesson? Um, and, you know, students can just sort of tick away on this and, and add in their feelings as they're leaving the classroom. Just really, really nice, simple way to do an exit poll. Um, but you can also change this, so you can have polls for whatever you might want to do. You know, one iPad in the classroom, you can imagine that students would, would be able to, you know, put their answers on this, or you just create this as a link, and then students would be able to, to answer that individually as well. So, you know, really, really simple thing that you can do. Um, and then the very last thing to say is, how do I save this as a web app on my device so that it's always there? Well, very, very easily, I can just tap on the share icon at the top. And if I scroll down, oh no, well, sorry, one other thing, I'm already in the one I've created. I'm gonna open this on my web browser, sorry. So open it in Safari. And then I tap on that screen share icon. And then if I tap on add to home screen, it creates that link for me, creates an icon, tap add, and then that's now on my screen. And you'll notice now when I go into it, it opens it as if it's an app, so I don't have all of the other tabs along the top, um, which is how you sort of saw this in the first place. So there we go, classroomscreen.com, really, really useful tool to have in your armory as a teacher.